Good day, dear doctors. Good day, students. Good day, aspiring physicians. Welcome to our board exam secrets, pharmacology coaching. These are the following references for the following flashcards that I will be using. And you must master the following as you head to your big examinations. So let us begin with the concept of the National Antimicrobial Stewardship Program from the Department of Health in the Philippines. It has three goals. The first is to promote rational and optimal antimicrobial therapy. The second goal is to improve patient outcomes and lastly, to decrease healthcare costs by number one, reducing unnecessary antimicrobial use, decreasing adverse drug events, and lastly, decreasing mortality and morbidity from infections. Now, the difference between bactericidal and bacteriostatic. So always remember, the suffix cidal means to kill, while the suffix static means to inhibit growth. The bactericidal drugs are the cell wall synthesis inhibitors. They have a narrow spectrum compared to the bacteriostatic antibiotics, which has a broad spectrum. And the bacteriostatic antibiotics would be the protein synthesis inhibitors. Now, this is a must-know for your exam. The famous mnemonics of the protein synthesis inhibitors, buy at 30 and sell at 50. So just remember, at 30, this is the 30S subunit inhibitors, which is A for the aminoglycosides and T, the tetracyclines. Now, cefazoline is the antibiotic of choice for preoperative prophylaxis, which is defined as the giving of the antibiotic at least one hour prior to the first incision of the surgery. The following surgical procedures, non-complicated procedures, would use cefazoline. Neurosurgical procedures, breast surgery, hernia, and on complicated appendicitis. Now, what preoperative prophylaxis consists of the giving of neomycin and erythromycin? This is the famous Nichols condon preparation. Now, what about the drug which is given preoperatively to decrease the vascularity of the thyroid gland. This is Lugol's iodine, also known as SSKI, or the saturated solution of potassium iodide. Now, what drug is given prior to thyroid surgery in order to control adrenergic symptoms such as palpitations, tremors, and tachycardia? So we give a beta blocker, and the beta blocker of choice is propanolol. Now, if there is an intraoperative arrhythmia that occurs, then intravenous beta blocker, such as esmolol, would be the drug of choice. Now, what is the antimicrobial prophylaxis for meningococcal infection? We give rifampine or rifampicine as the drug of choice and the alternative drug as ciprofloxacine. Now, what is the antimicrobial prophylaxis for Neucystis carinae pneumonia, which is the most common cause of pneumonia in a patient with HIV or AIDS? So we give trimethoprim, sulfamethoxazole, or TMP-SMX. Now, what is the drug that we give for oral prophylaxis for infective endocarditis in patients? undergoing dental procedures. We give amoxicillin. So just remember, be careful if the patient has allergies to penicillin. 
Now, what is the oral prophylaxis for leptospirosis? We give doxycycline. Now, don't forget for severe leptospirosis, the drug of choice is intravenous penicillin. Now, friendly tip, always remember the enzyme transpeptidase. This is the enzyme which is responsible for the peptidoglycan cross-linking, which is the final step in bacterial cell wall synthesis. Now, always remember what differentiates a gram-positive from a gram-negative organism is the very thick peptidoglycan layer, which is responsible, along with tichoic acids, for the gram-positiveness of an organism. Now, drugs without Drugs such as penicillin should not be given in microorganisms without a bacterial cell wall, and that would be mycoplasma pneumoniae. Now, what antistaphylococcal antibiotic is responsible for causing interstitial nephritis? This is methicillin. Now, don't forget your aminoglycosides, which are notorious for causing nephrotoxicity as well as autotoxicity. Now, the specific kidney injury is acute tubular necrosis. Now, don't forget, there's another drug that shares these two side effects, nephrotoxicity and autotoxicity. That is the antineoplastic cisplatine. Now, aminoglycosides are notorious for causing neuromuscular blockade. Therefore, they are contraindicated in patients with neuromuscular junction disease, such as myasthenia gravis. Now, what about the uses of tetracyclines? Drug of choice for chlamydia, sexually transmitted diseases, cholera, as well as acne. Now, please remember, you should avoid tetracyclines in children because it causes not only teeth discoloration, but it also causes cartilage and bone damage. Now, tetracyclines are contraindicated in pregnancy because it is teratogenic, and tetracyclines are contraindicated in children under the age of eight because it causes cartilage damage. Now, tetracyclines should be avoided with drugs such as antacids because of chelation, and this will lead to milk alkali syndrome. Now, what about chloramphenicol? The most important side effect of chloramphenicol is actually bone marrow toxicity. However, what we anticipate in a standard examination is the gray baby syndrome, which usually occurs in premature neonates who lack the enzyme glucoronyl transferase. Now, what about clindamycin? Clindamycin is best for severe anaerobic infections, which are above the diaphragm, such as the respiratory tract. Clindamycin is also the drug of choice for aspiration pneumonia. However, clindamycin is associated with antibiotic-induced pseudomembranous colitis. So this is the antibiotic-associated colitis or the pseudomembranous colitis, which is associated with clindamycin. Now, this is because of the organism Clostridium difficile. Now, please don't forget, aside from clindamycin, cephalosporins as well as quinolones are also notorious for causing antibiotic-associated colitis. Now, what about the red man driving a van? This is red man syndrome, which is usually caused by the antibiotic vancomycin. Now, red man syndrome or generalized flushing is also seen in calcium channel blockers such as nifidipine and the taking of cholesterol-lowering drugs such as nicotinic acid or nicotinamide. Now, what is the synthetic fluorinated analog of nalidixic acid? 
it is the quinolones. So nalidixic acid is the parent compound of quinolones. And always remember that quinolones will inhibit topoisomerase or DNA chirase. Now, these are the adverse effects of fluoroquinolones. One, it causes cartilage erosion. It also causes tendinitis and tendon rupture. So quinolones are bad for the cartilage and bones. Now, what about sulfonamides? Now, one of the most important pearls to remember is that sulfonamides are the number one cause of Steven Johnson syndrome. You should also avoid sulfonamides in patients who have glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. Now, you must know the first-line anti-TB drugs, isoniazid, rifampine, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol. Now, please remember this table or this guru guide. Isoniazid inhibits mycolic acid. It also inhibits the absorption of pyridoxine or vitamin B6. Hence, one of the adverse effects is peripheral neuropathy. And this is the rationale why vitamin B complex is given in patients taking anti-TB meds. Now, ethambutol causes optic neuritis, and out of the first-line anti-TB drugs, it is only ethambutol, which is not bactericidal. Pyrazinamide is hepatotoxic, and it is notorious for causing hyperuricemia. Therefore, avoid pyrazinamide in patients with gout. Rifampicin, letter R inhibits letter R, or RNA polymerase. It also causes letter R, red-orange fluids. Now, for the medications for mycobacterium leprae, don't forget dapsone, clofazimine, and rifampicin. It is important to note that it is only rifampicin which is used for both mycobacterium tuberculosis and mycobacterium leprae. Now, dapsone is a sulfonamide. Therefore, watch out for Steven Johnson syndrome and avoid this in patients with G6PD deficiency. Now, what about herpes zoster ophthalmicus? The drug of choice is acyclovir. All herpes virus infections are treated with acyclovir except CMV or cytomegalovirus because the drug of choice for CMV is gangcyclovir. Now, what is the carbonic anhydrase inhibitor, which is used for the treatment of glaucoma and also used for the treatment of high-altitude sickness or mountain sickness? It is acetazolamide. Now, what is the only current available topical ophthalmic antifungal preparation, which is used for the treatment of fungal keratitis and mucor mycosis? This is the ophthalmic drug, natamycin. Now, what is the antihistamine ophthalmic solution which is used for the treatment of allergic conjunctivitis. This is ketotifen. And what is the mast cell stabilizer, which is used to treat allergen-mediated conjunctivitis? It is chromulin sodium. And what is the cholinergic parasympathomimetic agent, which is used for the treatment of glaucoma? It is pilocarpine. And what is the anti-malarial, which is notorious for causing retinal blindness? It is hydroxychloroquine. And in malignant hyperthermia, these are the two drugs which are the usual culprits. First is succinylcholine, next is halothane. And the drug of choice for malignant hyperthermia is dantrolene, 
and dantrolene specifically acts on the rionidine receptors of the calcium channels. Now, what drug causes dissociation and is known as the dissociative anesthetic? It is ketamine. And what anesthetic causes diffusion anoxia? It is nitrous oxide or laughing gas. And what is the curls for opioid toxicity? Number one, it acts mainly on the mu receptors. And this is going to manifest either as respiratory depression, euphoria, and pinpoint pupils. The antidote for opioid toxicity is naloxone. Now, what is the antidote for heparin toxicity? It is protamine sulfate. The antidote for acetaminophen or paracetamol toxicity is NAC or N-acetylcysteine, which is a mucolytic. And what is the antidote for beta blocker toxicity? It is glucagon. And what is the antidote for benzodiazepine toxicity, such as diazepam or clonazepam or midazolam? It is flumazenil. And what is the antidote for cyanide toxicity? Now, you have to remember, cyanide toxicity is usually caused by the antihypertensive sodium nitroprusside. Now, sodium nitroprusside causes abrupt vasodilatation and abrupt drop in the blood pressure. Hence, it is used for hypertensive emergency. However, one of the side effects is cyanide toxicity. The antidote is sodium thiosulfate. Now, what about the chemo drug doxorubicin? Doxorubicin causes dilated cardiomyopathy. There is cardiac toxicity. And the drug of choice for the treatment of doxorubicin toxicity or adriamycin or downorubicin toxicity is dexrazoxane. And what about the two breathing lungs, B and B? Bleomycin and busulfan are the antineoplastics or the anti-cancer drugs that cause pulmonary fibrosis. Now, the antiarrhythmic drug, amuterone, also causes pulmonary fibrosis. Now, what about methotrexate? Now, methotrexate is a dihydrofolate reductase inhibitor. To decrease the toxic effects of this chemo drug, we give folinic acid or leucoverine. And this is what we call the leucoverine rescue. Now, what about cyclophosphamide and the antineoplastic iphosphamide? It is notorious for causing the toxicity, hemorrhagic cystitis. Now, the hemorrhagic cystitis is because of the metabolite acrolyne. The antidote is mesna. So the antidote for cyclophosphamide hemorrhagic cystitis is mesna. Now, what about pancreatic and colon carcinoma? The chemo drug of choice is 5-FU or 5-fluorouracil. Now, this antineoplastic inhibits the enzyme thymidylate synthase. And the drug of cho choice for islet cell tumors, it is streptozocene. Now, what about cisplatine toxicity, which usually manifests as autotoxicity, nephrotoxicity, as well as peripheral neuropathy? We give the drug amifostine. This is a cytoprotectant, which decreases the toxicity of cisplatine. Now, what about the adrenal medulla tumor, phaochromocytoma, which usually presents with elevated levels 
of VMA or vanilla mandelic acid and usually presents with hypertension, headache, excessive sweating, and palpitations. The first line drug is phenoxybenzamine. Now, just in case phenoxybenzamine is not in the choices, then you can give phentolamine. Doc, what if both of these drugs are in the choices? Then the best answer is phenoxybenzamine. This is ideally given at least one to two weeks before the contemplated surgery to prevent a hypertensive crisis. Now, what about the novel oral anticoagulant or NOAC, the bigatran? What is the reversal agent for the bigatran toxicity? It is iduracy zumab. And what about warfarin toxicity? So warfarin inhibits the gamma carboxylation of the vitamin K-dependent clotting factors, which is clotting factors 2, 7, 9, and 10. So we give vitamin K as an antidote or fresh frozen plasma because it contains the vitamin K-dependent clotting factors. Now, don't forget when you give warfarin, it acts on the extrinsic pathway and you have to monitor the pro-time. Now, what about the tocolytics used in obstetrics? We have ritodrine and beta-2 agonists such as terbutaline. Now, carbitocin is also used as a tocolytic and this is actually a synthetic oxytocin analog, which is actually safer than oxytocin and has lesser hypertensive episodes as a side effect. Now, the pearl of differentiating low molecular weight heparin versus unfractionated heparin. Always remember low molecular weight heparin, such as Fonda Paranox and Oxaparin. It has a better bioavailability. It has a longer half-life. Hence, the advantage is it can be given once a day to twice a day, and it is given subcutaneously compared to unfractionated heparin, which has to be given in a continuous infusion with frequent activated partial thromboplastin time monitoring. It is heparin, which is associated with significant thrombocytopenia. Now, this is your CDB guru guide. What medications contain protamine? So what contains protamine is the NPH insulin, also known as protamine zinc insulin. Don't forget the onset of action of regular or rapid insulin is within 30 minutes to 60 minutes. Now what novel Oral anticoagulant is safe in renal failure. It is a pixaban. And what NOAC is best for stroke patients? Ischemic stroke who have atrial fibrillation. You can either give the bigatron or Riva Roxaban. So please allow me to mention the brands. We have Sorelto and Pradaxa. Now, this is a must-know for your boards. What is the thrombolytic of choice for acute ischemic stroke, which is qualified and arrives within the golden period of within 4.5 hours post-ictus? It is RTPA or recombinant TPA. This is Altiplase. Most dreaded complication, is intracerebral hemorrhage. Now, another must know, dipeptidyl, peptidase, or DPP4 inhibitors. So what does inhibition of DPP4 activity do? This prevents the inactivation of the GLP or the glucagon-like peptide. Now, don't forget, your glyptines, cetagliptine, 
saxagliptine and linagliptine, these are the DPP4 inhibitors, and they actually increase the risk of heart failure. And how does it increase the risk of heart failure? It activates the sympathetic nervous system and it stimulates cardiomyocyte cell death. Now, linagliptine is the DPP4 inhibitor, which is safe in patients with renal failure or chronic kidney disease. Now, what about aspirin? It causes irreversible inhibition of cyclooxygenase. It also inhibits thromboxane A2, and the inhibition of thromboxane A2 is responsible for its antiplatelet aggregation properties. Now, what about this tip about the antacids? Aluminum hydroxide causes constipation. Magnesium hydroxide causes diarrhea. And which of the mucosal protective agents causes black stools? It is bismuth. B for black, B for bismuth. And which of the mucosal protective agents is a prostaglandin E1 analog? And it causes unwanted uterine contractions and is the most widely used abortifacient in the Philippines. It's misoprostol or cytotec. Now, what about loperamide? This is an anti-diarrheal drug. It's used to treat traveler's diarrhea. This binds specifically to the opiate receptors of the gut wall. And loperamide actually has an anti-secretory effect against cholera toxin and some of the toxins of E. coli. Now, what is the drug of choice for partial seizures? It is carbamazepine. What is the drug of choice for trigeminal neuralgia? It is also carbamazepine. Just watch out for Steven Johnson syndrome. Now, what about the antineoplastic 6-MP or 6-mercaptopurine? Now, this is actually a prodrug that comes from azathioprine. It causes bone marrow suppression, hepatotoxicity, and since it is a purine analog, be careful in giving 6-MP in patients with gout. What about phenytoin? It causes gingival hyperplasia. Phenytoin is an antiarrhythmic. It's a class 1 antiarrhythmic. It's also an anti-epileptic drug which blocks the sodium channels. Phenytoin is notorious for causing arrhythmia if the infusion is given too fast. If there is phenytoin toxicity, then it's going to manifest as posterior circulation manifestations, such as nystagmus, ataxia, and dizziness. Now, what about desmopressine? This is used for central diabetes insipidus, as well as hemophilia A or von Willebrand's disease. Now, what about HMG-CoA reductase inhibitors? The statins, they will inhibit the rate-limiting step in cholesterol synthesis. Just watch out for statins because they are notorious for causing hepatotoxicity as well as myositis. Orlistat is a reversible inhibitor of lipases particularly lipoprotein lipase, which is the clearing factor for most of our dietary fat. This is an anti-obesity drug. Now, for neuroleptic malignant syndrome, it's usually caused by neuroleptic drugs such as olanzapine, risperidone, and haloperidol. Now, don't forget haloperidol is notorious for causing extrapyramidal symptoms because of activation of the dopamine 2 receptors. Haloperidol is also a typical antipsychotic. It is the typical antipsychotics which are notorious for causing extrapyramidal symptoms compared to the newer atypical antipsychotics like ketiapine. 
Now, haloperidol is also the drug of choice for Tourette's syndrome. Now, how do we treat NMS or neuroleptic malignant syndrome? We give dantrolene or bromocryptine. Now, heads up, if bromocryptine comes out in the boards, it would most likely be the drug of choice for a pituitary tumor, which is most likely a prolactinoma. Now, what is the non-benzodiazepine hypnotic for insomnia? It is Zolpidem. And what is the benzodiazepine for anxiety? It is letter A for anxiety, letter A, alprazolam. And what is the SSRI or the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor that we can use first line for depression? We can use isitalopram, sertraline, or paroxetine. And what is the drug of choice for absent seizures? We usually give ethosoxamide. Alternative drug is valproic acid. Now, heads up for your boards. Valproic acid is teratogenic. It can cause neural tube defects. Therefore, in a woman who is pregnant or desires to be pregnant, you should stop the valproic acid. So this ends our very quick board exam secrets for pharmacology session. God bless everyone and good luck. This is Dr. Toom, the Master Guru.